Hey everybody, this extra video is just to help with practicing with the last types of problems that we talked about in our mixed bag. So just to review again, we've got the GCF, which is super important that we always start factoring looking for a GCF. We've got a difference of squares formula, sum and difference of cubes. We have trinomials, and when A equals 1, that was pretty okay, that was not too bad. When A was not equal to 1, that was harder. And so we talked about using this, rewriting it into four terms and grouping. Okay, so finally we get to this sort of mixed bag where when you have any kind of factoring and I throw this at you, where do you start? What do you do? Because I won't always tell you, all right, factor this one using the difference of squares. This one, can you try this one by grouping? You won't know. So you just have to be able to just practice and practice and practice and be able to identify. But again, always look for GCF first and then after that, use anything. Use any tools that you know to factor these until you're done. For example, let's just do 59. This is 81 minus 3a cubed. All right, I'm going to use GCF check. GCF. And there actually is one. Do you see? Not a letter, but the 3. So I'm going to factor out a 3 first. 3 into 81 goes in, I believe, 27 times. Minus, divide a 3 out, and I get a cubed. Okay, so I did my GCF check, and this is where we look and see, all right, well, look at our answer inside the parentheses. Is there anything we can do? And I'm talking about, do you see difference of squares? Do you see any kind of cubes? Are there four terms for grouping or just a normal trinomial where we can just do our normal factoring? And look what I've got. I've got two terms, one, two. It's subtracted. So right now, I'm either thinking maybe a difference of squares or a difference of cubes. But look what I have. I have an a cubed, and 27 is a cubed number, right? 27 is the same thing as 3 cubed. Hey, okay, so I'm going to use a difference of cubes. Difference of cubes formula. All right, so let me put that off to the side so I know. This is a cubed minus b cubed, which is a minus b, a squared plus a b plus b squared. And I got those signs by using soap, right? Okay, let's identify. A here, what did you make? What did you cube to get 27? There you go. For B, what did you cube to get A cubed? Now, hopefully this is not too confusing. Normally when this is X's and we use A's and B's to represent the formula, it's not confusing, but do you notice there's an A in the factoring and an A here in our formula? So hopefully that doesn't throw you off. Just think of A as the first term and B as the second term. All right, here we go, friends. This would factor. Now notice the 3 is going to stay on the outside the whole time as a GCF. Small parenthesis, big parenthesis. Mm, bigger parenthesis. All right, let's do, formula says A minus B. That would be 3 minus A. Okay, the next part would be A squared plus A times B plus, let's extend my parenthesis a little bit, plus b, which here is a, squared. All right, now we just simplify. Ready? 3 is on the outside, 3 minus a, and inside, how about 3 squared? Well, 3a is just literally 3a, and then a squared is a squared. And friends, that's the answer for 59. So again, we did a GCF check first, and what was left after GCF? Oh. A difference of cubes. That's pretty cool. All right. How about we try something like, hmm, they all look so good. They're all really interesting and tricky ones. I'll do 63. All right, 63. Let's do a GCF check. And let's see. There's a D everywhere. And I'm looking at the number, and I think, 30, I think 3 goes into all of them. So when we take out a 3 and a 1d and see what's left after I do that. Ready? When I take out a 3d from the first term, I get d squared. From the second term, if I divide by 3d, I get minus 22d. And when I factor the last term by 3d, the d disappears and I just get 72. Okay. Now, once we stand back and look at that, the 3d is on the outside. And look at that, we have a normal trinomial where the a value in front of the d squared is 1, so this is just normal factoring. 
I think of two numbers to add to give me negative 22 and multiply to give you 72. And we actually did this one in the previous video. So if you remember those numbers, if not, just check again. But this is pretty standard, just regular trinomial factoring. Ready? Okay. We have the 3D from the GCF. And since our A value here is 1, we have a D and a D. And the two numbers, if you remember, to make 72 ended up being, uh, if I remember, minus 18 and minus 4. Okay, so we put that right in. How about minus 18 and minus 4? And we did it. That's it. We're done. We took out the GCF, and what was left on the inside was just normal trinomial factoring. There you go. How about 64? Let me make some room over here for 64. I like 64 because my eyes saw that y to the fourth and y squared, and I thought, oh gosh, what is that? <laughs> Yikes. So remember in that other video we saw, maybe it's easier if we rewrite it using squares. Let's make it look like this. And if we can solve that, we can solve the original pretty easily. But let's do a GCF check really quick. And no, I don't see any. Okay. So let's solve this one for now, and then we'll come back to the original. Okay, the A value here is a 9. Oh, that's a little scary. Also, unhappy face. <clears throat> so we're going to have to do this one by grouping. So we're going to think of two numbers here that multiply to give me 36. Remember, I took the outer numbers, multiply to give you 36. And I think, okay, give me two numbers that add to give me negative 13 and multiply to give me 36. Let's see what we can think of. Two numbers that add to give you negative 13 and multiply to give you 36. I'm thinking actually the 9 and the 4 might be pretty close, but I need the 13 to be negative when I add. Well, two negatives when I multiply give you a positive 36 over here, so I think that works. Okay, remember the next step is we keep the outsides and we rewrite the inside term as these two numbers that you found. So I have about negative 9y and a negative 4y. Okay, four terms. What should we use? Grouping. Here we go. I'm going to take out a 9y out of the first two terms. Leftovers, how about y minus just 1? Now, in the next term, remember you see that negative sign right here? Remember we said last time we should factor out the negative from the third term, if you see it? So I'll factor out not just a 4, but a neg 4. Because that's going to make my inside y minus 1. And again, you notice that my parentheses match. That's great. We did well. So here we go. That means my last factoring should be y minus 1. And what was left before the parentheses? 9y minus 4. Great. But remember, this is the answer to that. Remember how we went backwards from here back to here. We just took the y's and made them y squares. Because that foiled to give you y to the fourth, and that gave you a y squared on the inner terms. So my last step is really, really, the final answer is y squared minus 1 and 9y squared minus 4. Good job. But wait, there's more. You thought you were done. Ha ha. Why am I not done? Even though it looks great, I put the squares back in, Mr. Brown. Why? Why? You have to keep going. I'm so glad I did this problem because the moral of the story a lot is keep going. Don't always assume that you're done. Always look for more. Do you see that there's more here? Do you see there's a lot more here? Why? Do you notice that? Difference of squares. Oh my gosh, look at that. Another difference of squares. Get out. That's awesome. We have a double difference of squares. Oh my gosh, we found a treasure on this one. All right, let's factor out this first parentheses. This is a difference of squares. So y and y and plus 1 and minus 1. Yay. How about this friend over here? Parenthesis, 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 parenthesis. All right. To square, what do I square to get 9y squared? Oh, I see, I see. So I almost mentally take a square root of that. And then 4 should be a 2 and a 2. And plus and minus. Oh, my lovely friends, you made it. Well done. 
but always, always look for more. Even though you feel like, wow, I'm really done, uh, just double check. And now I really, really am done because there's no difference of squares. There's no four terms. There's no cubes or anything like that. That was number 64, and that was a beauty. Okay, what else could we do? Let's pick out a couple more. Mm, maybe 66 is pretty good, but I'm running out of room, so I'll do 66 over here. All right, we should do a GCF check on 66. GCF check. Yeah, a 5, right? Okay, I'll take out a 5, and I get u squared minus, all right, 405 divided by 5. Mm, I think that's 81. All right, great job. But are we done? No, let's look for more. And look, do you see what's on the inside? Two terms. Subtraction. They're squared. Difference of squares. Yay, here we go. Keep the five on the outside. And let's break it down. All right, this is u and u. And then the 81 is a 9 and 9. Let's double check. Are we really, really done? Yes, sir. And there you go. And again, all these, you can always foil these out and see if you are right. Okay, let's do a couple more. How about two more? How about we do, mm, I'm thinking maybe 67 and 68. But I'm going to use a lot of room here. So let me do 67 on a brand new page. I'm going to do 68 on a brand new page as well. Okay, 67 was 10y squared plus 5y minus 180. Let me double check. Yes, sir. And just for I'm doing it now, how about I go and put down p to the 6th minus 64. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go, friends. 67. Ready? Let me just double check one more time. Good. Okay. Well, it's a normal trinomial, which is b a beautiful. Let's look for GCF. GCF check. Yeah, oh, do you see? Not the 10. I almost saw the 10 there because I saw all those zeros. Mm. But I think a 5. Let's take out a 5. We're left with 2y squared plus 1y minus ugh, 180 divided by 5. How about 56? Works. Uh, did I just say 56, Mr. Brown? What I meant to say, you thought you saw a 5 there, right? You're so crazy. It's 36. It was always 36. I don't know what you're talking about. So there you go. Please don't rewind the video. Okay, so now check and see. Are we done? No, because we have a trinomial. Can we factor it? Maybe. Notice that the a value is not 1, so we're going to have to do grouping. So why don't we go ahead and multiply your outer terms here. 2 times negative 36 is negative 72. And I ask you, my lovely friends, give me two numbers that add to give you a plus 1 there and multiply to give you a negative 72 there. And again, we've done this one before in the past. So again, repetition is good. I think it was 9 and 8, and the 8 was negative. Okay, so the 5 stays on the outside. And now I'm going to keep everything inside the parentheses. Now, this is going to require a lot of extra parentheses. So if you would rather... If you would ra would you rather would you rather just work with inside the parentheses and then bring the five out when you're all done? That's fine too. It's going to look a little less complicated. But I'm just going to be really strict. I'm going to keep the five on the outside and see if Mr. Brown can do it. Okay, we found our two inner numbers. So the next trick with grouping is you keep the outers and keep the outers, and you're going to rewrite the inners as what you found over here. That's a nine y minus an eight y. Four terms. Grouping, okay, I'm still going to keep the 5 out there. But now I'm going to do grouping, which is going to require more parentheses on the inside. So I'm going to change the outer parentheses to brackets. Oh, <laughs> check me out. All right, in those first two terms, I think I can take out just a y, and that's it. Leftovers. How about 2y plus 9? All right, cool. In the next two terms, ooh, I'm taking out that negative. I'm taking it out. I'm taking it out. Okay, what else? How about maybe a 4? I think that's it. Leftovers, 2y minus 9. No, it should be a plus, right? Because I took out a negative. Good call. And again, why does it have to be a plus? Because you want your parentheses to match. And now they do. 5 on the outside. Okay. Now you're going to factor out the 2y plus 9. And what was in front of those? The y minus 4. 
Good. We're pretty much done. I'm just going to release the square brackets because I don't really need them anymore. I can just keep it as like a coefficient outside of my parentheses. And there's your final answer for number 67, folks. We found GCF, and then we had to do, again, grouping afterwards. Great job. And the last one for now, 68. Whew, look at that. Well, he's not a trinomial, and there's definitely no GCF. But let's just see. Okay, I've got two terms, one, two. Hmm, I've got subtraction. So right now, I'm down to either maybe a difference of squares or a difference of cubes. Hmm. Well, let's see. I know that 64 is a perfect square, right? He's 8 squared. And if you think about it, p to the 6th is a perfect square also. Think about it. Go backwards for a sec. What do I square to get p to the 6th? Ah, interesting. Interesting. Okay, okay, okay. So I could use this as a difference of squares. But, <laughs> One of the reasons why I love this problem is, let's do that check again, ready? One, two terms, subtraction. But look, do you realize that 64 is also a perfect cube? Ha <laughs> ha! And just to make things worse, what do you cube to get p to the 6? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh my gosh, so which one should we do? The trick is either one works. What's going to eventually happen is if you do the perfect, uh, the difference of squares first, you're going to eventually have to use the cube formula. If you do the cube formula first, you're going to eventually do the difference of squares formula afterwards. So you choose either path that you like. I think I'm going to do the uh, difference of squares first, and then I'll see the difference or sum of cubes, whatever pops up when I'm done. Ready? Here we go. All right, so again, this is basically p cubed squared minus 8 squared. So I'm talking about a squared minus b squared. I can see that my a is p cubed and my b is 8. Okay, if this factor is 2, a plus b, a minus b, then this friend here, <clears throat> excuse me, if I draw some little arrows to help out, this guy, let's move him around over here. Sorry for all the messiness. That should be equal to, here we go, the first factoring should be A plus B, right? And the next one should be A minus B. Great. Okay, okay, okay. So I did a difference of squares. And you can look at this right now and see how that would give me the original back up here on the top. If I fold it out, the P cubes would multiply, add powers and get P to the sixth. The inner and outer terms would die, and the last term would be negative 64. So that's good. But again, check for more. We're not done. Because now, do you see? Two terms, addition, and these are perfect cubes. Oh, if that was enough pain, look at the second parenthesis here. Friends, one, two, subtraction, perfect cubes. Mr. Brown, are we going to have to do both formulas in one? Oh, yeah, you are. Good luck, honors. You can do it. Ready? Let's just do one at a time, okay? Take a breath. Ready? Okay, go. Ready? All right. If this is perfect cubes, in this problem here, A is just a regular P because A cubed is P cubed. B, if B cubed is 8, then B is 2. So ready? In this formula here, we're going to get small, large. We get, ready? It was A plus B. So A plus b cool and the second one we have a squared minus remember soap use the opposite sign minus a times b and then always positive b squared ready this just this little piece is p plus 2 p squared minus 2p plus 2 squared. Cool. Just a side note here, friends. Doesn't it look like I should be able to factor that? But remember, we always, always said with the difference or sum of cubes formula, we never factor that last long parenthesis. It just never works. And you can try it as much as you like, but it really doesn't work, I promise. Okay, let's do this friend over here. Now, it's going to be very, very similar to what we just did. Here, a to get a cubed 
is just p cubed, a is p. b, if b cubed is 8, the b is, again, 2. So here we go. We get small parentheses, long parentheses. Okay, this is the difference formula. So this is going to be a minus b. This is a squared plus, change your sign, <clears throat> a, b, always positive, b squared. There we go. How about p minus 2? p squared plus 2p plus 4. Again, this guy does not factor, so don't do more. Okay, if, here we go, here was our plan. If we started with this here, folks, this was our original, and we're able to write it and factor it like this, then if each one of these was this and this, if this was being multiplied up here, you're basically going to take these two friends and multiply them. <sighs> Final answer. Ready? P plus 2. P squared minus 2P plus 4 times P minus 2. P squared plus 2P plus 4. Wow. That's a really great, great problem. That's a good sort of critical thinking problem. That's a really good honors problem. If you started doing this way over here on the right side and doing as a difference of cubes first, you will find difference of squares on the inside when you're done. And he would factor like you see on the bottom. And I would just tell you now, I'll give you a little hint. Do you see how these could have come from a difference of squares? And that's what would have happened here, folks. Wow, really, really good job. So now you've got some really good practice on just basically everything that's in the lunchbox everything look for a gcf first always 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 and then don't be afraid to just keep going and look for more great job folks factoring done